What's up guys, it's your boy Nathaniel Messiah. So in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining how I went from making 20 pounds a month to now at 18 making 5,000 pounds a month online. And I've been very hesitant to make this video because I've done a video like this before and that video actually did really well, like it did well on my channel. And I was planning to make a part two to that video because a lot has happened in the time between that video and this video. I was gonna make one all the way back in November, but I'm always hesitant to make videos like this because even though it seems like you guys do enjoy these videos, uh, it's a bit of a touchy subject. And always when you're talking about money, it's a bit of a, you know, like a gray area because again, not everyone is as fortunate as you not everyone is in the same position but one of the things that I remembered was back in 2019 when I was making you know like 20 pounds a month I saw a video from Mike Thurston where he was talking about how to make an extra 15,000 pounds a month right and what I took away from that video as someone not making as much as he was wasn't oh I'm so jealous why is he making a video out of this I was inspired by what he said and that actually kind of gave me the inspiration to keep writing some of my training programs and things like that and things that have propelled me to be where I am now so if it wasn't for his video I may not have had the inspiration to get to this point now so I hope that I can be that for someone watching this video I hope that someone watching this video can maybe start their own journey to you know improving their financial success online and everything like that so yeah but other than the things I've already said before we get into the video I want to ask you guys to subscribe to my channel okay we're really trying to hit 100k this year I'm working hard to try and get there make sure you go and follow me on Instagram as well Nathaniel Messiah the same as my YouTube name I post almost every day over there and I've got a lot more subscribers than I have followers so something you need to go over there and follow me if you like this t-shirt, it's Gymshark like everything else, so you can use my Gymshark link which is in my bio. And yeah, anyways, let's get into the video. Okay, so where does my money come from, right? You guys are probably asking that question because it's all well and good just throwing figures out there, but I can actually explain where it comes from. So, last video, I was making around £2,000 per month, right? Now, I'm making around £5,000 per month, okay? And what that's comprised of is sponsorships, YouTube, and my own online training plans, right? So, sponsorships, okay? Obviously, between last video and this video, I picked up two new sponsorships and come into a new contract with one of those sponsorships. So, now I'm sponsored by Gymshark, MyProtein, and now also Ledger London. And I'm not gonna get into exactly how much from each of those it is, but I can just say that, those three adds up to £2,120 per month, those three sponsorship. And then next we have my training plan. So depending on the month, this could be higher than my sponsorship money or it could be lower. But I put the sponsorships first because that is guaranteed money. Like I've, I've signed those contracts, so they're contractually bound to pay me that as long as I, you know, fulfill my requirements to them. Uh, whereas training plans can fluctuate. But training plans now are between 2,000 and 3,000 pounds per month. If I have like a month where I do a load of sales, like November was a good example. I had a sale at the very beginning of November and then I had a sale at the end of November for Black Friday. So that one I did about 3,000 a month like December. That was a little bit more chill. Um, I did about 2,000 something. In fact, you know what, let me, let me show you instead of just telling you. If we go into Squarespace Analytics um, and we pick, let's say from the beginning of November to the end of November, so I can just show you guys, that was 3,312, wow, that's actually more than I thought I remembered. Anyway, yeah, 3,312 pounds in that month, right? Uh, we have a month like December, uh, and that was... 2056 that's because I think the sale that I did started in Jan started January 1st I decided to do my new year sale starting January 1st rather than before so that's why that one was a little bit lower but um, yeah so between 3,000 and 2,000 so so let's call that two and a half right so now we're at what 4,620 right an average month and then Filling in the blanks is YouTube, which literally, in all honesty, can be whatever. Like YouTube depends on so many factors. It depends on the views you're getting, because obviously typically more views equals more money. It also depends on the ad rate. So the ad rate depends on so many things as well. The ad rate can depend on what the actual topic of your video is, because some topics make more money than other topics, right? It can also depend on the time of year between October and maybe January, December, the ad rate is typically higher because it's coming towards Christmas time, more people are shopping, advertisers are really trying to push their stuff out there for that Christmas push, so it's usually higher between those months. So it literally depends on so many factors, but normal, normally it's between 400 to 300 and 800, 900, like somewhere in between that ballpark. So if we call that 500, right? If we call that 500 as the average month, like, so let's go to the YouTube studio. So 
if we go to December 2020, that was from the last four months we had, $825, which is, what is $825 in pounds? What? Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't right. $825 in pounds, there we go. 595 pounds. 65 pence. So that was basically 600 bucks. Yeah, let's call it 500 or for average mount. So that brings us to 5,120 in an average mount. It could be higher depending on training plans on YouTube. It could be lower depending on the same things. Um, but that is around what I would say would be average, right? So now that we've established how much money I make, we've also established where it comes from. Now it's time to get into how can you incorporate some of the things that I did to get to this point. So in terms of what I haven't already talked about in the last video, and in terms of the things that were able to get me from there making £2,000 a month at 17 to now making £5,000 a month at 18 was mostly the brand sponsorships, getting brand sponsorships, right? There's not one thing you can do that is going to assure you're going to get a brand sponsorship. Like for most brands, there's no application process. They have to come and find you. Okay. But when it comes to getting brand sponsorships, first of all, more than anything else, it's going to take a solid grind to get your platform to a level where you've now got a captive audience you've got people who are actually watching your content week in and week out and that's just a grind and that that time takes different for everyone because I'm coming into my fourth year of doing YouTube and these brand sponsorships came in my third year so literally sometimes it just takes a bit of a grind to get to the point where you've now even got to a level where brands are willing to sponsor you right but then more than that one of the things is when it comes to how much brands are actually willing to pay you this is something where I can give a few more tips because the figures that I threw out I've talked to people in the industry and people with like way more followers and stuff than me sometimes for certain of those brands are not even making that much more or making similar amounts right and the reason I think that is is because of a engagement right so because like let's say you had 200,000 followers right but you got 400 likes on each of your posts and that's a real thing for some people like some people will literally have engagement that low if that's the case then you're actually less valuable to a company than someone who has say 10,000 followers but they get 1,500 likes or 2,000 likes because people are more engaged in their content. More of their followers are probably seeing their content. And for a brand, this means that their product, if they sponsor that person, is going to have more exposure. So what you really want to focus on, no matter what amount of followers you have, is really focusing on keep making sure your engagement stays high. And one of the best ways that I think you can do this is by looking at what your audience likes or because everyone will have posts that do slightly better and posts that do slightly worse right but go into your instagram insights and then look at the posts that have done the best in terms of reach in terms of likes in terms of on the explore page because explore getting to the explore page is really how you grow look at those posts and just try to do them and then try to do more posts like that it sounds simple but look at the things that are going well and then try to keep doing that but you know switching it up every now and again and doing it in more creative ways so I've got 73,000 subscribers on YouTube, but the views I get is the same as certain people who have, you know, 100, 150. Same thing with Instagram. I've got like 40,000 followers, but some of my posts have 10,000 plus likes. So in that sense, I could be more valuable to a brand than someone who's got 100K, but usually gets the, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 likes because people are clearly not invested in their content and they're not even, and they're not really captivating that much of their audience. So I think that's the main reason why through a lot of the brand sports I've been able to get. I've been able to get, you know, even more money than some people would have thought. Um, and another thing is just posting consistently, right? In the period leading up to most of my brand sponsorships, I started posting every single day. And now even with the brand sponsorships, I've been posting like every single day. So if you are not only meeting your post requirements, but you're going above and beyond, then they're more likely to, you know, on the next contract renegotiation, maybe throw you in another couple hundred pounds because you're going above and beyond what they were even expecting. So that is one thing when it comes to, you know, securing brand sponsorships. And then when it comes to selling your own product, whether for you guys, this is merch, um, maybe you do your own training programs. Maybe say you've got a cooking channel and you've got and you sell a cookbook, whatever, or something like that, right? Just selling more of your own personal products, right? I might do a whole separate video on just how to get online training program sales, but number one is actually how competent you are. How good is your actual training program? Because if your training program isn't good, then you might get a boatload of initial sales just based on your your 
large fan base, but you won't continue to get sales because a lot of people buy programs and stuff based on word of mouth and testimonials, right? So they're only gonna wanna buy it if they know that from other people, your program is actually good. So when it comes to my training program, I'm coming up to having sold them to almost 2000 people, right? And I would not have got anywhere near there if my program wasn't actually good because I started off not even having a huge fan base, but it was just that I made sure that one of the things that I have in the program is asking people to take transformation pictures and stuff. So when a lot of these transformation pictures are coming out, when a lot of the testimonials of how much strength people have put on and things like that started to come out, it convinced more people that my plan is actually good. And that's what made it continue to get sales because you can only be a con man for so long. If your product isn't actually good, you'll get found out eventually. People will start writing reviews and stuff that, yeah, his program is absolutely terrible, right? But if, if time after time people are saying, yeah, his program's really good, and my, my, my strength blew up and stuff like that, then more people are gonna wanna buy it. So making sure that the product you're actually putting out is good in the first place is the most important thing bar none. Because if it's a good product, then your product will actually even start to sell itself. You have to put less effort in to advertising and things like that because people are telling other people to buy it. They're doing the promotion for you. So those are the main tips I can give. Those are the main specific tips I can give. But other than that, I know it's cliche, I know it's corny, but just stay consistent, stay motivated, and stay disciplined with your craft, with whatever you do on social media, and it will come with time. I'm telling you, it will come with time. Because you might look at me and say, oh, I'm only 18, and all this stuff is already happening. But if you factor in that I started at age 14, and this is my fourth year of doing YouTube, like pretty much consistently the whole time, I never went any point throughout my YouTube career of not at least like putting out a video a month, at least. Really, I think I went a couple of points where I wasn't posting as much, but for, throughout most of those four years, I posted pretty much consistently, and this is the point that's got me to now. I, have, I didn't blow up crazy, I didn't overnight get to this point, it took a solid grind, and I'm still, I've still got a long ways to go, but I'm excited for what the future has in store, as long as I keep working hard, if you guys continue to support me and everything like that, so yeah. And then the last thing I can say is, other than the money side of things, right? If you do something that you love, you are so much more likely to be successful at it because you're gonna put more effort into it. Like when it comes to all the things that I've done in terms of my channel, my Instagram, training plans or whatever, it's been so much easier for me just because I enjoy it, right? You don't always enjoy the grind. Like the grind is hard no matter what, but I enjoy, I enjoy training. I enjoy training other people. I remember when I first started to go into the gym, one of the things I was most excited about was literally just helping my friend learn how to train. And all the time I spent learning about different training principles, I didn't do it just thinking, oh, because I'm gonna make money. I did it literally because I love it and the money came afterwards. So that's another thing I would say. Don't go about it just trying to do it for the money. Like the money is is nice and that stuff comes afterwards. But if you don't actually love it and you're just trying to be like a, you know, like a slimy salesman almost, then it will come out on your followers and your followers will see and it's not gonna, I don't think you're gonna really last long. So I think that you guys can gauge that through my videos and just all the stuff I've done that I have a genuine love for bodybuilding, teaching other people how to train, helping other people get to where they want to go in terms of their body. So I feel like that is even more important than the money because if you focus on that, then the money will come. But if you focus on the money, I feel like you're less likely to even be successful. But yeah, we've come to the end of the video. Um, Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you got to this point in the video as well. If you got to this point in the video, comment all things Messiah right now because that was my OG YouTube name, my OG Instagram name. Name. If you have to put in the video, comment all things Messiah, and I know you're a real one. But either way, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, again, make sure you follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff. That's where it all goes down, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.